Greetings from Stuart at Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs and welcome to another live fix video. I'm hoping to fix this Blackstar HT5R uh, live on camera and you can follow me through. Uh, Paul very kindly brought it in to me and the problem is a very nasty loud 50 hertz buzz and not much signal getting through. Let me say straight away that these HT5s are very difficult to fix. They have one printer circuit board stuffed full of surface mount chips, resistors the size of, size of a grain of salt and capacitors not much bigger. And there, there aren't many faults that you can fix on these amps. There's a couple of things that go wrong with them. Typically the two power field effect transistors can uh, and often do fail. Um, and they, uh, they use cheap capacitors on the HT and also the low voltage lines and they can fail. Uh, probably have a go at the FETs first of all because they, they are just so, such a common failure on this. But first of all let's um, turn on the amp and see if we can hear what Paul was hearing. So here we go, I'll turn on the power switch it's in standby at the moment so we won't hear anything just let it warm up for a second this amp uses a 12AX7 ECC83 as the preamp stage and a 12BH7 as the uh, power valve although of course it only produces 5 watts well right away I can hear pretty horrible buzz coming out of that don't like the sound of that at all so without further ado I'm going to whip the chassis out and uh, let's see what we can see inside I've got the chassis out that came out fairly easily let's just have a quick look top side of this amp not a lot to see really um, output transformer tiny little thing really but it's only a 5 watt amp 12x7 ECC83 preamp tube. The heavy lifting is done by a 12BH7. Again, only 5 watts, so you don't need a great big hefty valve there. And here's the mains transformer. Again, doesn't need to be very large. Hardly any power needed on this amp. Let's flip it over and have a look bottom side. Here we are bottom side of the amp and you can see the problem immediately with trying to repair these amps. We have surface mount chips, surface mount op amps, these little tiny specks here are resistors and that's a resistor, all of these are resistors. You can't, well if you have specialist equipment you can change those but um, I can't do it. So normally I would um, throw away this board, I hate doing it, but that's, un that's what you have to do with the Black Stars, and put in a new board. And Black Star used to sell these boards, but I don't believe they do anymore, so a whole generation of amplifiers is about to end up in landfill, because these boards are not easily repairable on a component level. However, I have had a little bit of success with these boards. Um, and the two problems I know about are these capacitors here, these smoothing capacitors. They go short circuit. Um, I don't know whether they're cheap capacitors or not. I have definitely had those go down. And the number one cause of problems on Black Stars is these two FETs here. They go quite frequently. So I'm hoping we're going to get lucky with this amp and it'll be one of these two problems. I'm going to get the magnifying glass out now and have a close look down here at these FETs to see if I can see if, anything, if anything's been going on. Um, if not, I might just change them on spec. It's not too hard to get the board out here. 15, 20 minute job maybe. And it's always just worth changing those on spec. So I'm going to have a look at that now and I'll report back. I've had a look now with the eyeglass, my um, jeweler's eyeglass, which I'll show you in a moment, and I definitely do not like 
the look of the connections on either of these FETs. I'll, I'll see if you, we can get a little bit closer with this before it goes out of focus. And you might just be able to see they look it looks very odd there it's kind of corroded and um, maybe a bit of burning or something so I'm very unhappy about those two FETs there and uh, I, I'm going to change uh, I'm going to change those on spec and see if that cures it here's my um, little jeweler's eyeglass by the way very useful thing to for getting very close it goes right into your eye and then you have to put your head right in to be able to see um, I will just quickly change the valves um, I, I'll only report back to you if that does the trick I don't for a minute expect it to do the trick this amp's got a very nasty hum kind of sound on it and I can't think that would be the valves right so let's get the board out I'll do the valves um, and then I'll just take the board out and we'll have a look at it after I've done that just briefly before I take the board out um, I thought I'll, I thought you'd like to know how to do it you have to remove the valves of course because they're plugged into these bases uh, then I'm going to take all the controls off a lot of these are very loose anyway they're not um, see that one just ripped one that just rotates around this field that's just rotating round and round and round so a lot of them are loose I'll take all the control knobs off take all the nuts off that hold the shafts on take out these two screws here one there one there I th uh, one here three four one over here five <coughs> I think that's it um, five screws and then the board will should just joggle out like this and um, I don't have to undo any of these connections or anything I should be able to turn the board upside down and have a look what's going on I'm particularly uh, particularly interested in these capacitor joints under here um, and then also to have a really close look at what's going on on the underside of these FETs um, so let's do that now and I'll be back to you in a second well, I've hit an immediate problem here in that um, the knobs just slide straight off, which is why they're loose. But these plastic bits here are supposed to remain inside the, the knob, and uh, and they're stuck onto these shafts here. So I'll have to have a go at getting those off. This um, knob here is very stiff, but just a little, a little tip here is to just use a screwdriver and um, and put it in there. And then you'll find that uh, that you can just leave a. It's hard for me to do with the camera, holding the camera. Anyway, you can just put a screwdriver in, and that'll lever off quite easily that pot. So I'm going to take all those off and have a look and see how many of them have this problem with the with the inner plastic sleeve being free of the knob and jammed onto the spline of the pot. That's all the knobs off and um, I see it's left a full complement of these these black inners maybe maybe it's supposed to be like that but I can't imagine it is um, anyway I'm hoping that when I take the board out that these will clear through the holes of the left without me having to try and take them off to um, to undo the nuts I, I just simply use a, a spanner like this and um, loosen them all and then undo them by hand so I'll do that now and take the screws out and see if uh, these black collars clear the, the hole in the front panel. Quick update, well of course they don't clear because stupidly I realise we can't even get the nut off of here without removing this black collar. So I'm going to have a go at one or two of these and see what's a good technique for removing these. I've never seen this problem before on Black Stars, normally the knobs just come off. Have these been glued on or something? What's what's gone on here? Right, I've got a technique that works um, by undoing the nut almost to the end. That gives me a kind of lever point for the blade of my screwdriver. And when I get in there I can... Again, very difficult to do with the holding the camera. Um, I can lever the black black collar off there you go 
So I'll go along with the screwdriver and use the same technique on all of these and remove these. And I think <coughs> eventually they're going to have to be glued back into the knobs to prevent them just going round and round and round. Mm. Not good design, Black Star. Nil point for that one. Well, here we go. I've got all of those black collars came off reasonably easily using that uh, leverage technique. I've taken out the input jack um, screw and um, I've taken out the screws here, 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 here. Yeah, where are we? One there, look. One up there. Um, no reason now why the board shouldn't come out. It feels fairly loose. So, yeah, you can see that that board is going to come out and clear there quite nicely. I can't do it one-handed, so that won't take me too long to do. And um, I've got a few different little pots here. Look, it's always quite useful. I've got three pots on the go here. These are the outer screws that held the chassis in. Here are all the front panel furniture, knobs and collets and uh, screws for that. And, um, oh, I've got one in there. <laughs> I meant to put all the um, screws from the board into here, but I see I've put several into here. Oh, well, the thought was there. And that, that helps um, reassembly. So what I'll do now is joggle this board out and flip it over. And then um, I will probably have to cut this cable tie. And then we'll have a look under the board and see if we can see any disaster situations. Well, the board came out fairly straightforwardly little bit of trouble joggling it past the front panel but I managed and here we are on the underside looking at the bottom of where those two FETs come in, those two FET power transistors. It's a bit of a disaster zone around here. I'm not sure what's gone on. Someone has drilled two holes here. I'm pretty sure they're not standard. In fact I've got another old board, a board from an HT5 and they're definitely not on there. And look, a couple of holes bodged in there. Was this arcing at some point and somebody tried to um, uh, stop these pins arcing across? That's a good technique for doing that, by the way. The soldering on here is pretty ropey. This joint here looks very dodgy. And um, this connection here has no connection on the underside of the board. It goes on the top side of the board. And that was a bit of a disaster zone up there too. So I think we have no alternative now but to um, whip these two FETs out and see if I can clean this up and make sure that the connections are, are correct. Fortunately, I've got um, an old board which I can use to, uh, to check that against. This is one I, re one I removed in the days when... Uh, um, Black Star was still doing it, and, and you can see there's the same FET area there, and there aren't any of those holes bodged in. Um, so I'm not quite sure what has gone on with this board. Has somebody been in there before? Has this had a problem before? I don't know. It won't take me a huge length of time to whack in a couple of FETs. So I've got um, I've got some here actually. Fortunately, I've got. Uh, three, I mean, I've, got, I've got four in there, so that's quite nice, quite useful. Um, I usually buy them ten at a time because they, they do go on these black stars. So I think the next thing to do is whip those out, put some new ones in, see if we get lucky. I would give it 50-50. Sorry about the noise in the background, that's my desoldering tool powering up. I thought I'd just show you the... Uh, the FET that I'm using. The original FETs are obsolete, I believe. So the replacement part number is Papa 5 November Kilo 50 Zulu Foxtrot Papa P5NK50 ZFP. A couple of quid each, I think, from memory. Um, you can get them on eBay or other outlets. That was pretty hard, actually. My desoldering tool wouldn't touch those uh, pins, the solder just stayed on there. I had to resort to using um, some Chemwick um, desoldering braid 
very good stuff this um, don't buy cheap versions get the expensive version and by putting a soldering iron onto it it sucks up the solder along the braid and I was able to clean these up I haven't used any solvent yet but um, you know just have a look at the mess that this is that's going to take a little bit to put back together neatly um, as I say no idea what's gone on here anyway I'll give that a little bit of solvent and a toothbrush and clean that up a little bit okay I'm going to pop these new fets in and they go in this way around with the bulges facing each other like that so we'll pop this one in with a bit of luck it'll stay there whilst I solder it I'm going to have to do some more work on this when I've just just tacked them in because I want to make sure that these are all connected to where they're supposed to be going and I don't like the look of some of these tracks so I'm just going to tack this one in here go on yep that's good enough in fact I can do that joint there too and uh, and this one not sure where these go neither of these neither of these have got a track going to them so I'm hoping or I'm assuming they go top side but I'm very lucky to have a spare board that I can refer to so I'll just pop the second one in now <laughs> there we go okay there we go let me have to start again so let's just see if I can tack it in all I need to do at this stage yeah that's tacked in good enough just to work out what we're doing so what I'm now going to do is using the spare board go through it track by track and make sure each pin goes to where it's supposed to do I want to take this slowly one step at a time so I'm going to do the underside of this FET first and checking on my spare board this is supposed to be connected to here you can, you can see the track there the middle pin is supposed to be connected up to here and this pin goes nowhere on the underside it will almost certainly go somewhere on the top side so just using my continuity meter these should be continuous they are the middle pin should go up to here and it does so I'm happy with that the next thing I'm going to check is the underside connections here I've just looked at the spare board and on this FET the middle pin goes up to middle pin goes up to here the top pin goes down to here and this connection goes nowhere on the underside so let me just check and that is the case so hit this should go to here it doesn't oh it does it yes it does it does good the middle pin should go to here and it does and this pin goes nowhere whilst I'm here I'm just going to, to um, improve this joint here then I'll flip it over and we'll have a look at where the top side tracks are supposed to go okay it's a little harder to show you the uh, buzzing out of the top tracks but anyway I um, I did buzz out the tracks on there and that was okay there was just one track there's just one track on here top side too and that was open circuit um, the track was broken whether that was me getting the transistor out or not I don't know but anyway I had to make quite a delicate repair by um, soldering a wire onto the pin there and bring it round and the track went to this little tiny surface mount resistor unfortunately not, not a great big one that would have been easy so I had to delicately solder that onto there without uh, doing any damage to the resistor so those two FETs are now installed and uh, of course the problem is we have no idea whether this will solve the problem so we've done I don't know an hour's work or something um, 
on spec really. Um, I do know those FETs go, I'm hoping they've gone on this occasion. Anyway, all we can do now is turn the amp on. I'm, going to, I'm not going to put the board back, I'm going to prop it up on some foam and make it safe and then we'll tentatively turn on the amp and see if we got lucky. As I say, 50-50 I think on this one. Uh, by the way, whilst I was under the board I had a good look at the joints on these caps and uh, they're okay, although I haven't yet um, buzzed them out to see if they're any of them are short circuit. I'll do that next. Maybe I should have done that first, that would have been quite a quick job. But those FETs looked so awful, didn't they? The joints on them looked truly terrible. So let's get it propped up on a bit of foam. It's all a bit precarious, but this will do the job. I've got a great big piece of foam, solid foam in there. I've put the valves back in. The board is kind of balanced precariously, but that's good enough. I've put a guitar input in just in case we get lucky. And I've plugged in my speaker for the workshop. So I think, uh, well, I suppose we ought to just try turning it on. All right, well, the light's on, but that's no different to normal. Just let that warm up a bit and then we'll turn on the standby switch. No, that, that's that same hum. I'll just bring the... There we go. No change there. I'll strum the guitar. Horrible, distorted, hugely hummy sound. So we wasted, uh, you know, a good hour there changing those. Fets to no effect. Okay, um, I'm running out of tricks on this amp, so I will turn it off and just check those capacitors are not short circuit. I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't do that first, but anyway, that's how it goes. Here we are on the side of board again. I'm going to check the electrolytic, the big electrolytic capacitors. Um, one is here, one is here. Two smaller ones are across here and across here. I've completely discharged them by putting a croc to croc clip um, across each one for a couple of minutes. Because if there's even a tiny voltage on the capacitor, it's very hard to measure continuity. So we'll come in on this one here and see What's happened? There's, there's our uh, short circuit. Nothing there. You'd expect to hear a little beep just as the capacitor charges up. Hear that? Little tiny beep. That's okay, that capacitor. Let's try this one here. Again, the little beep is good. Seems fine. The two um, here now. Let's do this top one. No short circuits. We're looking for short circuits. Again, that was charging up, so that's okay. Charging up, that's okay. How about this last one? Ooh, ooh. That's interesting. Um, see if I can come in here without getting in your way. Well, we've got... F oh, that's very interesting. We've got 50 ohms both ways there. Um, possible it's something in the circuit but I think that capacitor there may be a bit suspect. Um, of course it's got all the symptoms when I think about it of a faulty smoothing capacitor because we've got massive hum on the on the signal which would imply um, a faulty smoothing capacitor. So I'm going to take that out and uh, I might try and show you that with my um, solder sucker actually and then we'll uh, pop another one in. Well, we'll take that and test it out outside the circuit. Just whilst the desoldering tool warms up, which won't be very long, um, just talk you through my thinking. I'm a little bit fed up that I've spent all the time on those FETs, but of course, had they been neatly soldered in, um, we, we might have wasted some time, but it was quite a disaster area around that FET pads and so I'm not sorry to have tidied that up a little bit because that might have been a fault waiting to happen. Very nice desoldering tool this. When you press the trigger, it's a soldering iron on the end of course, and when you press the trigger a vacuum pump comes into play and sucks the solder up into a into a receptacle here. 
very useful tool so hopefully it will make light work of this let's have a go yes it strugg struggles a bit sometimes it's not great that I'm probably going to have to get a bit clever with that so I'll uh, I'll rejoin you when I've removed that capacitor. I'm probably just going to pull it from the other side and heat it up with a soldering iron. I'm a bit disappointed. Um, I pulled the capacitor out and when I buzzed on these connections here they had 50 ohms across them so uh, I don't know what's going on in this part of the circuit but it wasn't a short circuit capacitor. However, um, here is the capacitor I took out and can you see how bulged the, the uh, plastic is? In fact when I press that that's like a bubble of gas in there and that capacitor I think has been out gassing or whatever so I would immediately change that capacitor absolutely horrible so I think I'll just um, put one in and again I'm not feeling lucky here but uh, let's put one in and see if that does cure it Just before I pop the cap in, there's the old one, very bulgy, and here's one I took out of my Black Star spare board. Interesting 25% increase in size for an identical capacitor, 2200 microfarads at 35 volts. That tells me that Black Star had a problem with ultra cheap, nasty capacitors going down, and in later iterations of the board, they put a decent capacitor in. That's just my guess, not pointing the finger. But it's interesting, isn't it, the size difference between those two. Well, here we go again. Um, there's a second old cap there, and of course, if it does prove to be this cap, I will be changing that. There's a new cap look, standing a bit taller than the other one. We're plugged in. I won't bother with the guitar, because if we hear that horrible buzz again, we'll know we haven't got anywhere. So here we go. we we'll turn on... Um, power that's come on okay may as well just turn on standby let it warm up if I don't hear that buzz it'll be good news but no, there it is still there pretty sure it doesn't sound very nice does it so that's a no fix Hello again, it's been several hours since I did that last clip. I decided to take a break from the amp and just go and do something else. I find that helps if I, if I get involved in an amp and I'm struggling for a fix. And as so often happens, I've come back to the workshop now with a few ideas about how to move on with the next stage of uh, diagnosing this problem. I guess the subconscious works like like that and I've been thinking this amp is making a horrible kind of buzzing 50 hertz noise and I leapt straight in to change those FETs just because they go so often on these amps and I've repaired many amps using that method but actually that wasn't very clever of me because I'm not sure that the FETs would cause the amp to make that kind of horrible 50 hertz buzzing and that's almost always smoothing capacitors however um, I'm not kicking myself too much, as I said, because those FETs were in a terrible state anyway, so I would have ended up changing, changing them regardless, just because of the state of the board around that area. So I haven't lost that time. Um, so I've just been thinking, maybe the smoothing caps on this board, here's the, um, the gash board I had in my, in my bin, and um, the, the caps we're talking about are, are these for here. If you remember, I took this one out and put it into that amp because the the, the cap looked pretty bloated and, and not in very good, very good condition. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I've already buzzed out the, the caps on the, on the board, so there are no short circuits or anything there, which is what you'd normally expect with a faulty capacitor. Um, I'm going to put a meter on, a voltmeter on the bottom of these four caps. Um, two of them do plus and minus 
12 volts. Um, I think that's right, it might be... Uh, no, that's before the regulator, so that it'll be probably roughly plus or minus 24, 25 volts. Then that gets regulated down to plus and minus 12 volts. Uh, one's missing, of course, because I've taken it out. So I'm, I'm going to um, put the voltmeter on the back of the board and measure that we've got 25 volts there. And I'm also going to check the voltage on these HT smoothing caps. Um, these should have uh, a couple of hundred or so volt DC. Uh, if they check out all right on the voltmeter, we're getting the right volts, I'm going to get the scope out and just check the top two capacitors for hum and the HT capacitors for hum. And if I see some, you know, big, if, if, if it's nice steady state DC, then I'm really scratching my head. But if we see on some of these capacitors a, a horrible hum signal, then that'll prove that, um, that, that the capacitor's faulty. So that's my uh, plan for, the, for now. Um, and I hope that comes off and gives me a fix. If not, I'm really scratching my head on this amp. Um, you know, sometimes I wish I had a nice amp diagnostics computer that I could just turn on and it would beep away and tell me to change C42 and I'd change C42. Um, mind you, I probably, I probably wouldn't use it until I get to the end of the road on an amp and I'm really just feeling like giving up. Um, because half the fun is in the diagnosis. Anyway, let's crack on with that now and I'll show you um, me measuring the, the voltages on those caps and we will see how we get on. I hope you can hear that horrible hum in the background. That's the noise this amp is making. I've got the power on and uh, just to reorient you on the board, um, I have to reorient myself as well. Here are the HT caps, so there's one and there's the other on the underside of the board. And here are the low voltage caps. I think they're 2,200 microfarads at uh, um, 35 volts. So there's one here. And if you remember, we've already changed this one. There's one there. So I'd expect to see, I don't know, what, 24 volts or something, plus and minus on there, and a couple of hundred volts on here. Let's, t let's have a look. I've got the meter on 200 volts. So we'll go on to this cap here. And what have we got? Ah, oh, there we go. 20, 23 volts, that's fine. That's going to the regulator, so that will get regulated down to 12 volts. And here's the other cap, 23 volts, that will go to another regulator and get regulated down to minus 12 volts. So the volts are okay on there. We don't know anything about the hum on there, of course. Let's now check the HT caps. Um, of course, they would be much more likely well, no, maybe they wouldn't be more likely to go, but anyway, we do know that this one was very horrible. In fact, I've got it right here in front of me. It's bulged and absolutely... Pff, that's that's a terrible condition. That's the one we changed. Okay, so here we go on 1HT cap. Um, 190 volts. Just what, Don't worry about plus and minus, of course. It just depends which way I've got the meter leads around. 190 volts. No idea if that's right, probably not far off. 200 volts, again, who knows, a sort of the level I'd expect. So we're not seeing like no volts on there or something, um, which would which will cause a problem. Okay, I'll fire the scope up and we'll have a little measure AC wise to see if we can just just find out where this hum is coming from. I thought you'd be more interested in seeing the scope view rather than the board view, so I'll shout out where I'm sticking the scope and um, you can have a look at the the trace. I'll turn this to fairly sensitive, um, a volt, one volt per division, and I'll shout out, I'm going to do the low voltage caps first, so here's one side of the low voltage cap. Okay, there's a there's a volt of hum there. Not maybe not too worried about that one volt. Um, and here's the other low voltage cap. Ah, and I'm quite relieved to see the same amount of hum on the other low voltage cap as well. So that's probably acceptable one volt of hum 
don't forget that's going to go into a regulator now and will come out as nice squeaky clean 12 volt plus and minus okay let's now go on to uh, one of the HT caps um, not seeing not seeing, oh, there's a little bit of hum there look let me just turn up the sensitivity uh, that's 200 millivolts per division so there's a couple of hundred millivolts of hum there I'm not the slightest bit worried about that. that so that HT cap has got the correct voltage on and has no hum just check the other one, other HT cap I'll go back to one volt uh, where is it, here now oh, that's interesting that's that's either a very high signal or something's happening here let's just turn this up to maximum which is five on this setting five volts per division that's interesting that's leaping off the screen i'm just going to change the probe to divide by 10 so that now we've got 50 volts per division now let's go on there again aha Aha! Ha. Look at that. We've got fifty. A hundred. We've got. <laughs> we've got one hundred and seventy-five volts of hum on that HT capacitor. Well, I'm betting that that is faulty, which is quite surprising because it buzzed out quite nicely. It wasn't short circuit, and it had that. It gave that little beep, which means it's charging up. Um, on the on the volt on the meter okay so I will point the camera back at the board now and we'll have a little think about what to do but this is looking actually quite encouraging back looking at the board now I've made myself up a um, a little capacitor um, 330 microfarads at 315 volts on a, on a pair of crock lead, leads. Um, I keep meaning to make myself up a proper probe to do this, and I, I think I probably will after after I finish this video. Basically, a capacitor in a nice box with a proper probe coming out, and I can clip onto the chassis and just literally dab the probe onto a capacitor, and that puts the a good capacitor in parallel with. Um, with a supposed bad one of course and that would diagnose a faulty capacitor anyway I'm, I'm just going to um, dab this across here I just want to double check the polarity of this I think the negative is on the the right here I'm just going to quickly, quickly confirm that um, yes so positive is here negative is there I don't want to get this cap the wrong way around so if we dab this upon, uh, uh, over here hopefully the hum should go away I want to make sure my leads aren't shorting here, which they look like they're doing. Another reason for making up a proper probe. So let's see what happens when we do this. Oh, look at that. That just killed that completely stone dead. Uh, now I don't know whether I can clip that on there. It's just a little tail of something sticking out there. Then I can um, strum the guitar and see. A bit tricky. Yes, just able to clip that on there. Um, oh, this is fantastic, look at that. Oh, we're in business. Well, well, well. Right, well what I'm going to do now is to uh, cannibalise the, the capacitors from this board here. They're, they are the two HT capacitors. Um, I'm going to put those in the place. I'm going to swap that other 35 volt capacitor because I didn't like the look of that one either with this better quality um, 35 volt capacitor. Change all four caps and we have ourselves a fix. Um, right, so good news. Excuse the noise in the background, that's my solder desoldering tool um, warming up again. I've turned off the power to this amp and uh, waited a fair amount of time and I've also checked that there is no HT on these caps anymore because I'm about to get my fingers in there and I've removed the mains plug. Um, 
it's going to be hard for me to show you how I take those capacitors because I'm going, I'm going to need to get my head in there. But I thought I might try and show you, this might not work out, how I would do it. Yes, I've got my desoldering tool, but it didn't really touch, and sometimes it doesn't, the uh, capacitor that I tried to take out of, out of here. If the solder's not very good, it won't work. So here's the capacitors we're going to try and remove. I will try the desoldering tool and see how we get on with it. Um, and then I'll show you an, altern an alternative method. So here's the tool. It's a soldering iron and a vacuum pump. So I'm going to put it on there. It's melting the solder. I'll wiggle it around a bit and then press the vacuum pump as I'm wiggling. And it's done a reasonable job, but that, that wouldn't come out, that capacitor. It's still soldered on the plate through. I'll try this terminal here, heat it up. wiggle it around to loosen it, apply the vacuum to suck the solder out and again it's done a, a kind of okay job but not perfect. Um, I might need to take this apart which I do frequently and remove the solder and clear it out it might work a bit better but I won't do that now I'll show you um, how I would tackle that um, if, if I got into this situation. We'll do it on this capacitor here you can do this with two terminal components, of course you can't do it with an integrated circuit or anything with more than two terminals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up one joint, because you can't heat up both at the same time, heat up one jo joint, and then I'm going to just put some pressure on here and try to lift that leg a little bit on the solder joint, because I, can't, I, don't, I don't want to go right over there, it would, it would bend the leads. And then I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to heat up the other joint, and I'm going to to put pressure this way now and see if I can lift up that leg then I'm going to heat up that joint and I'm going to rock this cap backwards and forwards until it comes out notice by the way it's also glued in which doesn't help um, but I imagine I'm going to be successful here so um, I've got my finger here ready to push on here and I'm going to do this this one here um, so I'll heat that up now sorry the things are waggling around a bit I'm not perfectly placed to do this now I'm pushing, putting some pressure on. I felt it move a little bit. It's just moved a little tiny bit. Now I'm going to push this way. A firm, steady push. I'm going to heat up this joint. It's not playing ball. I can't, ah, there you go. It, it moved. It moved rather more than I would have liked it to. It, what happened, of course, is the glue seal broke. Now I can put... that's pretty much out that one. I can heat up this joint again and rock it the other way and there we go the capacitor has come out. So I'm going to do that on here but of course it's going to be a little bit more awkward for me to get in there and then it'll be a question of straightening these with pliers, removing excess solder and um, sometimes even that's not enough and I need to to get in there with a file and just file off the any any excess solder because otherwise this has got no chance whatsoever of going back so if I want to get this back in here when I've done this I need this needs to be perfect so I can pop it back in okay so I now I'm going to label up this uh, capacitor here so that I don't forget which is a good one and then um, I'm going to take these capacitors out and replace the whole lot with uh, with the with the capacitors from the spare board I thought you might like to see what I found when I removed the suspect capacitor. See all this horrible material around here? And here is the underside of that same capacitor. As you can see that's got itself into real trouble so we have a definite fix here. Um, I've taken both of the HT caps out I'm about to put the new HT caps in. I'm going to use a bit of uh, desoldering braid to clean up these holes before I try and put the new capacitors in. Great stuff this soldering, desoldering braid. The solder just wicks straight up the, bra up the braid. Um, but don't buy cheap alternative, use Chemwick. 
having a little bit of trouble with this one, there it goes leaves a beautiful clean clean hole there we go, they're nice and clean um, I'll pop the new HT caps in there and then I'll move on to doing the second of the low voltage caps right I've removed the second of our uh, low voltage caps and cleaned up the holes with my uh, solder braid and I've removed the second of the good 2200 microfarad 35 volt caps from my spare board so I'm just going to pop this in now um, I'm going to put a little dab of glue on the bottom here to stick the cap in it just stops it vibrating um, when you pick up and move the amp and if you vibrate the cap it does this over a period of time and of course these joints become bad I've done that with the HT caps too so I'm just going to pop this in from the other side hopefully it will fit I've cleaned up nicely the wires and bent them straight yep that's gone in beautifully you can see the, the two leads poking out there so it just remains for me to solder those quickly one two and we're in business we have one two three four uh, good caps in there I'll just check I've got them all the right way round all the negatives go to one side so yep that's good um, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on this one I notice it's very slightly wobbly I didn't actually glue that one in when I when I changed that first one and uh, that's good to go I'm quite confident now about putting that all back together and it working so let's put a dab of glue on there and put the chassis back in and see where we are I just thought of one other thing I'd like to do it's only a small thing really but I've got a couple of strips of plastic here and um, which I've just cut from some gash sheet I'm just going to put a dab of glue on each of these cap tops here and um, glue these little plastic pieces on I'll tell you why in a moment it's not very pretty but uh, no one's going to be looking they're easily removable if if they need to be removed they just lever off quite quickly and the purpose of those is to give the whole thing a bit more stability uh, the reason they glued these caps in originally is for exactly the reason I said when you're bouncing this amp around these these caps can vibrate slightly and, and over a number of years the solder joint on the bottom comes undone and causes a problem and this will just anchor this cap to this and this cap to this and give the whole thing a bit more stability and rigidity right I'm gonna put the board back in now I've put the amp back together now and that all went back together nicely so final test amp is switched on we have volume on the clean channel dirty channel yep seems to be alright feedbacking okay and um, reverb works digital reverb on these boards sounds quite nice though so that's um, nearly a wrap but don't forget we still have the problem of these knobs all of which uh, have their inserts have, have been um, removed I'm not really sure what's supposed to have gone on here this obviously fits onto the uh, onto the splined bit I can see that it can only go on one way this is a really smooth polished plastic surface here and a really smooth polished interior to the to the knob how on earth is that supposed to go in there and hold and not have the knob rotate like this on 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 top of here which indeed four out of I don't know how many two four six eight four out of nine of these um, controls did exactly that the controls just rotated round and round and round so again not great design is it what I'm going to try and do now is um, put a bit of araldite round one of these and push it into the into the knob leave it to set and then put that one knob on and see if that works okay I don't want to do all of them and, and make a mistake and get it wrong um, 
great, so I'll do that and then I'll report back to you. I thought I may as well show you this. Um, Araldite Rapid, five minutes, epoxy. Uh, I won't do too much because I'm only going to do one knob at the moment. I'm fairly sure this will work, I just don't want to suddenly find I've messed up nine knobs somehow by not understanding something. Right, give that a good old mix. Obviously I've got far too much here. Back in the day I used to use the old Araldite two-part epoxy. Um, some of you may remember it, it was kind of more paste-like than, than this, this is very clear. And uh, I, it used to take hours, hours to set. I reckon it was better than this five-minute epoxy. Um, I don't know that you can get it anymore, the old pasty Araldite. It used to be great stuff. And uh, I think from memory, it's been a while since I used it now, I think the two, the two, uh, the hardener and the epoxy were different colours, so you, you could clearly see how well you'd mixed it. Both of these are clear, so you don't really know how well how well you've mixed it, but anyway, there we go. Um, right, so I'm just going to get some of this onto... Um, I wonder if it's better to put it on the inside of the inside of the knob rather than try and coat that. I, th I think so. I think I'll... Yeah, I think I'll just put it on. Right, and now this goes in this way. I'm just going to push that in. That fits nice and snugly in there. I suspect that will do the job, but I'll just let that dry for an hour or so and then um, come back and uh, fit it and make sure it works okay and then I'll repeat with the other controls. Okay, this is this is set rock solid. Well, reasonably solid. Um, so there's our first knob. It does have a, an, an indent, so I'll just make sure that I put that on. Yeah, I think that's okay. Very tight to go on, but that's probably what you want. And that's not going to rotate around now, so I think we'll um, we'll we'll do that on the others. Well, just a quick update. I decided to um, try some of the knobs without gluing them on, and all of these knobs, um, one of them, one of them I glued, but all of the all of these knobs work perfectly okay, and they don't show any tendency to rotate. So, so that's without any glue apart from on one of those. These three do rotate in their in their collars. I don't know what the difference is, um, but anyway there you go. So I'm going to glue just three of these and um, see if I can fix that problem. Well there we go, another live fix under our belts. Uh, Blackstar HT5R, R standing for reverb, and i um, very pleased to have fixed this amp because now I can put out this video and in years to come I'm hoping to save 50, 100, maybe a couple of hundred of these from being thrown away for want of a capacitor change. So thanks for watching and uh, a nice fix and I'll catch you on the next video.